Okay, so our goals today are simultaneously modest but important and those goals primarily are to introduce radians as an alternative way of measuring angles. And when we introduce radians, they're going to seem kind of arbitrary. It's difficult at this point in our mathematical career to answer the question of why we would use radians instead of degrees. I mean, the short, but probably not very satisfying answer is that a lot of calculus works nicer if you use radians instead of using degrees. So let's start before we talk about radians. By defining the so-called unit circle. And the unit circle isn't anything seemingly special to talk about. It's a circle with a radius of one centered at the origin. So looking at the Cartesian plane and remembering that the origin is where our x and y axes meet. Here's the unit circle. Here's the point one is zero. Zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero, negative one. And that's the unit circle. And the unit circle is going to be used an awful lot in this class, in spite of the unprepared unprepossessing uh, appearance. We're going to define some very important stuff using it, starting with radians. So let's make the observation that angles can be used to define arcs on the unit circle and vice versa. So let's draw an angle. For the moment, it doesn't have to be in standard position. Let's just say we have an angle like that. Draw well, that angle you see it gives us an arc on the unit circle. An arc is just a way of saying part of a circle. It's and similarly, if we have an R, so if we have part of a circle, we can draw line segments connecting the origin to the ends of the arc, and we can use those line segments to define an angle. So every arc gives us an angle, every angle can give us an arc. And we'll be interested in the lengths of these arcs. <laughs> So we'll have the Cartesian plane and 
the unit circle on the Cartesian plane and an angle, let's say, um, let's say an angle in the standard position. By the way, if you haven't seen it before, that symbol is the Greek letter theta. It gets used very commonly for angles. And then we've got this arc on the unit circle. And we can talk about the length of the arc. And we make the extremely banal observation that the angle and the length are two different numbers. Um, the angle and the length are different. That angle looks like it's about 450, I'm sorry, 45 degrees. That length should be a pi divided by four. So you've got an angle and you've got a length and they're different. And where radians come into play, and again, this is maybe not the most intuitive thing anyone's ever done, but you know, the reason that the angle and the length are different, it's, I mean, that angle can be whatever number we want it to be. We're measuring it with these units called degrees. And if we measure the angle with degrees, then it's 45 degrees. But we could use a different unit than degrees. Degrees aren't sacred. They come from Babylon and we use them out of tradition. We could measure angles using a different type of measurement. Radians are a way of measuring angles so that on the unit circle the angle is the same as the arc length. Reproducing that picture, but this time using radians, The length of this arc is pi divided by four. And that's, uh, that's geometry. The circumference of a circle is two times pi times the radius um, This is the unit circle. So its circumference is two pi, and that's a an eighth 
of the unit circle in the picture. So two pi divided by eight is pi divided by four. If you were wondering where that comes from, and we're going to say, okay, that arc length is pi over four. Let's say that that angle is pi over four. Pi over four radians. So this is an alternative way of measuring angles. And depending on what field you're working in, um, some, you know, you might use degrees, you might use radians, it's all kind of based on convention. If they're doing anything involving calculus, they're going to be working with radians, because radians and calculus play well together. If you are, you know, just designing architecture and you're not taking any derivatives and stuff, and you've got, you know, your plan that you're working on, you would probably, I suspect, use degrees, just because talking about 45 degrees is easier than talking about pi over four radians. 45's a nice whole number. You can add it and subtract it and do all of the good stuff with it. Pi over four, of course, is not a nice whole number. You'll give me a second. Pi over four is 0 0.785398 and then a bunch of other decimals. So, um, Using radians is good because they work well when you do calc to this, but the trade-off is that instead of nice angles like 45 and 30, we have to deal with angles like this, 0 so in this class, we'll sometimes use radians and we'll sometimes use degrees, depending on what seems most appropriate to us. But let's try to nail down some facts around, about radians and compare them to facts about degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle. Compared to two pi radians. And again, that two pi comes from the circumference formed of the, together with the fact that we're using the unit circle, so the radius is one. We've got a unit circle, so R equals one. And we're looking at this angle, a full rotation around the unit circle. Well, if you look at the arc this angle creates, we start here. We go fully around the unit circle and we end up here. So the arc length is the circumference of the circle 
and taking our equals one and plugging it into that form to the, the circumference of the circle is two pi. Well, the entire point of radians is that the angle and the arc length are the same. So if the circumference is two pi, then the angle is also two pi. And then, I mean, we'll learn to convert from radians to degrees and vice versa. It's not really hard, but there are a few other equivalencies that you should probably just know and not have to use a conversion form to the every time. Um, a right angle, 90 degrees, is pi over four radians. Pi over I over two radians. And this just comes from this. 90 degrees is a fourth of a circle. I over two is a fourth of two pi. Then, oh, you should have at your recall that 180 degrees is pi radians. And again, we're not doing anything really clever here. 180 is half of 360. Pi is half of two. And then those are the really important ones, but there are a few others that kind of are going to show up throughout the class. Thirty degrees is pi over six. Radians sixty degrees is pi over three radians and forty five degrees is pi over four radians. And rightly or wrongly, trigonometry classes tend to spend a fair amount of time talking about 30, 60, and 45 degree angles. So again, it will be convenient if you can just internalize this and not have to you know, use a conversion form to the every time it comes up. But as for how to do conversion, well, we can work it out. Um, and in fact, we can work it out based on what we have written here. 180 degrees equals pi radians. Ordinarily, I should say, ordinarily it's assumed that if there's no degree symbol, we're working with radians. 
And because of that, you don't have a, there's no symbol for radians, and you don't ordinarily write the word down. You can just say things like 180 degrees equals pi, and everyone will assume that they're saying 180 degrees equals pi radians. I, of course, as your, as your teacher, am trying to be as clear as possible and not leave room for confusion. So I'm writing the word in even when people ordinarily wouldn't. So we can take this and we can divide both sides by 180. And find that one degree is pi divided by 180 radians. And then we can use this to convert from degrees to radians. Like suppose you have 70 degrees and you want to convert that into radians. Well, 70 degrees is, or rather, let's start that sentence again. One degree is pi over 180. So 70 degrees is a 70 times that. 70 pi over 180. And traditionally, because, I mean, if you put that into your calculator, you just get some messy number. Traditionally, we write radians when possible with a pi in it. So, like, we probably wouldn't turn that into a decimal. We'd probably just leave it be. This formula... I mean, I made some statements here. I said, for example, that 30 degrees is pi over six radians. Let's see if this formula agrees. We have 30 degrees. Well, one degree is pi over 180 radians. We have 30 of those. So 30 degrees is 30 times pi over 180 radians. 30 pi over 180 radians. And then we simplify this. Let me not cross anything out. Let me just write new stuff down. Um, this top and this bottom both end in a zero, so you can cross that zero off. And then three goes into eight 
15 six times. So we get pi over six radians. Any questions so far? Then we could go the other way if we started with that statement and divided the other way. That is, if we took the statement that 180 degrees equals pi radians, and instead of dividing both sides by 180, divided both sides by pi. So conversion would now be done in a similar way. Let's say we have O pi over 12 radians. And we wanted to know what that is in degree. Well, one radian is 180 over pi degrees. So pi over 12 radians is pi over 12 times 180 over pi degrees. Our pies cancel. And we get this. And this will simplify further. Um, how much further? I'm not sure. Top and bottom can both be divided by two. Now top and bottom can both be divided by three. Now oh, apparently apparently it's just something nice. Fifteen degrees. Of course, if you insist on using radians, then you can't rely on having nice numbers of radians. In particular, I mean, pi over two, that was very cute, because pi over 12 was very cute, the pi's canceled, but if you have like zero point one, two, seven radians. And you want that in degrees, you're going to have to end up reaching for your calculator. So speaking of which, let me reach for my calculator. While it's doing that, let me start the problem. Something I should do more often than I remember is to explicitly state 
to what our goal in that example is. Let's take this and convert it to degrees. So we know that one radian is 180 over pi degrees. Well, we don't have one radian. We have 0 0.127 radians. So instead of 180 over pi, we have 0.127 times 180 over pi. And this isn't going to be anything nice. Point one two seven was it times one eighty divided by pi. It's about seven point two eight degrees. Which makes sense. Um, a fact that you should internalize, even if it's sort of an informal statement, bless you, is that a radian is much bigger than a degree. Because, I mean, 2 pi is what? It's 3 point something. So 3 point something radians is the same as 360 degrees. So that's conversion. So this is maybe getting a little ahead of ourselves. I mean, maybe that, well, but it's as good a time to do it as any. So our calculator will work with N. It's like if from high school geometry, you ever saw Sogotoa, the trig functions, you know we have those and we take the trig functions of angles, and your calculator will need to know how you are measuring angles, whether you're using degrees or radians. And it's the mode button up here. If you press it, you can go down and you see by default, your calculator is going to be working with radians, but you can switch it to degrees and back again. So I'll try to remind you if we're working with degrees to make that switch, by default, it's in radians. So a few other kind of stray statements. All that stuff um, we did yesterday when we were talking about angles, we were thinking of them as being measured in degrees, but you know, it's still true if you're measuring in radius. So, I mean, you still have, if you go from there, your initial side, and you move clockwise to the terminal side. That angle, which I said would be negative, I was talking about degrees at the time, but it's true with radians as well. It's negative whether you're measuring with degrees or whether you're measuring with radians. The only thing we said yesterday that maybe needs to be commented on further, now that we have two different ways of talking about angles,
was our discussion of coterminal angles. And if you remember that discussion, the point of it was that if you just have the initial side of an angle and the terminal side of the angle, that's not actually enough to tell you what the angle is. This angle could be 20 degrees, maybe. But these two same sides could also give us an angle of 380 degrees and so on. Um, the same two sides can represent different angles. And I said, speaking of degrees, that when possible, we like to use angles that are between zero and 360 degrees. I mean, if you can't help it, you can't help it, but 20 degrees is more comfortable than 380 degrees. And I said, well, to to take an angle and find a coterminal angle between zero and 360 degrees, you either simply start subtracting 360 if the angle is positive, or you start adding 360 if the angle is negative, and you do that until you're in the desired region. Um, that idea receives the logical sort of modifications if instead of measuring angles in degrees, we're measuring angles in radians. So if an angle is greater than two pi and notice, going back to something I've said a few times, Radians don't have units. If I say two pi and leave it at that, we assume that I be in two pi radians. Then to find a co-terminal angle between zero and two pi. We can repeatedly subtract two pi until we get in this interval between zero and two pi that we want to be. Like, let's say we have, let's say we have 18 radians. I'll write radians here just because they're so useful or I say we, I guess I really mean me. You might not have had time to get used to it, but I am used to whole numbers like 18 and being measurements of degrees, and then things like seven pi over two being measurements of radians.
So I'll write the word radians here, even though I don't need it to. So 18 radians is outside of this interval. To find a coterminal angle in the interval, now first, let's make sure we're clear on what 2 pi is as a decimal, 6.28 something. And now we'll take 18 and minus 2 pi, and we'll do it again. And now we get to stop because we have reached the coterminal angle we're looking for, 5.434 radians. There's no really good way to write this, you just have to write this sentence. 18 radians has 5.434 radians as its coterminal angle. In particular, I mean, that might seem like a kind of awkward way of writing, but we don't want to say that an angle was equal to its coterminal angle. 18 radians and 5.434 radians aren't equal. They just have the same initial and terminal sides. So it's slightly early, but this is a very nice break in the notes. It means that we can just have spent today talking about radians, and then we can look at arc lengths and areas on Friday. So I will call class here, and I will see you on Friday.